With a 43-inch 1080p 60Hz display, the MeTV 4A might be the perfect solution for the typical home that just wants to watch HDTV channels that are available with DTH or IPTV services. And at a price point of 23,000 rupees, this might be a no-brainer for a lot of people who are thinking about buying a TV. But this TV isn't perfect and we are going to talk about that in this video. Hey guys, I am Siddharth and this is MeTV 4A 43-inch review. The MeTV 4A looks a lot like other TVs on the market. The design is very common, but it is a well-built TV. The thickness is okay for a DLED TV, and even though this definitely is a thicker TV, I don't think that buyers are going to have any issues with its aesthetics. The bezels aren't super thin, but have an even thickness around the four corners, which looks pleasing. Three advantages of being a thicker TV is that this can have directly lit LCD panel, it can actually fit a decent speaker, which we'll come to later. And the design is comparatively robust, so you don't have to worry about accidental touches or avoid having kids in the first place. The TV is surprisingly light for its size, so it can be carried around easily by one person. One disappointment for me was that the table stand is made of plastic and feels very cheap. This definitely isn't an issue, but this TV has some other qualities that just make it feel like a cheaper TV. Coming to I.O., this TV has a very complete set of ports. You have three HDMI ports, one of which has ARC for audio. Then you've got three USB ports, all of which are 2.0. You've got AV in and SPDIF coaxial out, which I think most people won't use as this TV has the good old 3.5mm audio jack. So you can plug your stereo speakers in directly. We don't have any USB 3.0 ports here, but since this TV will play 1080p content, I don't think that transfer speeds are going to be a limitation here. There is existence of space behind this TV, unlike the MeTV 4, so you can actually plug in pen drives easily without needing USB extensions. Display quality is something that a TV should deliver up to a certain point regardless of the price range. With the MeTV 4, even though the quality may not have been as great as the top-end TVs, it was still very good and I never felt that it was holding me back from enjoying content on it in any way. With the MeTV 4A, however, I think that the case is different. The display panel is 1080p 60Hz, which is fine, but the quality in colors just isn't there. The colors are just off with this IPS panel, which is directly lit by LEDs. It isn't just the saturation with the panel that is low, but the color temperature is also a bit weird. I tried adjusting the saturation and boosting it a little, and changing the color temperature to a cooler preset did help with the image quality. It still didn't reach to a level which would make me say that it is as good as the LG or Samsung TVs in competition. Now, all of this might make the display seem bad, but it's not actually bad, and I'm sure that a lot of people might not even notice. And for a 43-inch smart TV costing 23,000 rupees, it is actually good and it's still a terrific value for money. It's just that the no-compromise experience that I'm used to with Xiaomi products isn't here. I think that majority of people won't find this to be an issue, and the content is still enjoyable on this panel. I watched some of my favorite shows on it, and the quality of colors didn't affect the experience in a negative way. But those who are used to better quality of colors will notice the inferior quality of colors here. The viewing angles are quite good, and there is only a little shift in colors and contrast even while viewing at extreme angles. This was expected with the IPS panel, but it's still great to see. In comparison with a 43-inch Full HD Samsung non-smart TV priced at 40,000 rupees, I did find the colors to be a bit better on the Samsung TV, but again, it's not a huge difference. The viewing angles also seem to be similarly good. So now, it would depend whether you think that spending 17,000 rupees extra is worth it for the little improvement in the quality of colors. Personally, since a TV is used for viewing content and not doing professional work, I don't mind the extra smart features at 17,000 rupees less, even with the slightly inferior quality in colors. But if you are in that color specific crowd, I recommend that you check this TV out in person before buying it, which shouldn't be very difficult as there are so many people who have already bought it. We tried this TV for gaming by connecting it to a PC. The input lag is way lesser than the Mi TV 4, but not by much. The input lag is way lesser than the MeTV 4, but not by much.
Have a listen to the delay between the mouse click and the gunshot and you'll get an idea. The delay makes this TV quite bad for competitive gaming, but for casual gaming like Final Fantasy 15 or racing games, this is not a big problem. Still, I do not like the gaming experience on this TV, so I think that you should only game on it if you do not have any other option. The panel has a semi-gloss coating which I am fine with, but it can get problematic if you have a light source reflecting off the screen. By the way, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel if you are liking this video so far, I have some exciting stuff coming up. A really big disappointment in my opinion is the fact that this TV does not have Bluetooth. And I say that considering the price point of this TV. Because Bluetooth is something that could be added for very cheap, because the OS and the hardware support it. And all they had to do was add a receiver which would have cost them only a few hundred bucks. And even if that meant that this TV would have cost slightly more, that would have been completely fine. Not being able to pair your Bluetooth devices like headphones and speakers just doesn't feel smart enough. And being able to watch TV with your wireless headphones without disturbing anyone can be an essential for a lot of people. There are workarounds for this problem. This TV has 3 USB ports, so you can use one of it to plug in a mouse keyboard combo with a USB receiver. And for audio, you can use something like this HomeSpot Bluetooth transmitter, which will let you use both the analog out and the digital coaxial out to connect a Bluetooth audio device. But all of this inconvenience could have been avoided very easily for a few hundred bucks so I personally see this as a big issue with this TV. Patchwall UI is the same as on the Mi TV 4 except that it has different looking fonts along with some minor differences. This is a custom skin on Android 6.0 so this TV can run most of the Android apps. You can directly load an APK on a pen drive or use alternative app stores like Aptoid to install apps. So all that Android awesomeness with MX Player, ES File Explorer and modded YouTube is possible here. You can browse websites and the TV handles complex web pages well. One extremely disappointing thing about this TV is that there was an option to just turn the screen off while keeping the TV on, which meant that you didn't have to wait 30 seconds every time you turn it on. But after it received an update, Xiaomi removed this option without mentioning in the changelog that they'll remove this option. And I really can't think of a reason for doing that. So if you have this TV, it might be better to not update it so that you don't lose this option, which I think is very important. The TV's display also turned off when you turned your setup box off, but now that doesn't happen after the update. Another big limitation here is that the UI is rendered at 720p, which means that by default, any app cannot reach a resolution beyond 720p. This includes YouTube, which by default goes only up to 720p, but with modded YouTube, which I link to in the description, you can reach 1080p. And it is quite unfortunate that Xiaomi has lower than native resolutions on all of their TVs including the Mi TV 4 and this makes the smart part of these TVs inferior to the competition like Woo and TCL which have stock Android which runs on their native resolutions. You can also cast your phone and PCs using Miracast and this wireless connection supports a full HD resolution which is nice to see. You get Mi IR cable with it which you can use to browse ongoing content on the TV channels on air and when you select the channel on patch wall, it switches to your setup box and switches to your selected channel using the IR cable. This TV has an M-Logic T962 chip and is powered by a quad-core Cortex-A53 CPU running at 1500MHz and a Mali T450 MP3 GPU running at 750MHz. Performance is good and you won't find it lagging or getting stuck. But the 1GB of RAM shows its limitation and the patch wall UI launcher, the home screen, will frequently be killed when you are running other apps. So when you press the home button, it will have to load again, which will take some time. This isn't a big issue, but it does make you wait for 2-4 to four seconds whenever you switch to an app that was killed in the background. The processor is fine, so this is an issue only because of this only having 1GB of RAM. In fact, the processor is so good that it can actually play 4K HEVC files if you install a third-party media player like MX Player. The stock media player won't play anything about NTP, but I don't think that you should be using it anyways when you can use MX Player. Another great thing here is that this can also play HDR files, which doesn't mean that this TV will show HDR as there isn't HDR display. But the clipping of fights you get while playing HDR content on other non-HDR displays is not here, so you can at least watch HDR content if you only have that version of a movie. 
It has 8 GB of storage, which I think is sufficient for a TV. Installing Android games on this TV is also possible, but the experience may not be that great, so I wouldn't recommend it. The remote that comes with the Mi TV 4A is good, but it definitely feels cheaper with its rubber buttons and less ergonomic shape when compared with the more premium Bluetooth remote of Mi TV 4. This is an infrared remote, but they have designed it in a very clever way, hiding the IR emitter bulb, which makes it look like it uses some other technology. The button presses on it won't get registered on TV at all angles or with a large obstruction between the remote and the TV, which is possible with the Mi TV 4's Bluetooth remote, but this remote will still register the input from almost all realistically used angles. This TV has 20 watt speakers and while wattage isn't everything, the quality of these speakers is actually quite good for a TV of this kind. You can hear the dialogues easily and you can definitely skip adding external speakers unless you want a home theater experience or have high expectations from your audio. I'll also play some music so you can get an idea of the quality. So in conclusion, I think that this TV is a great buy for most people who are looking to buy a TV at 23,000 rupees. But this TV isn't perfect. The biggest issue I have with this TV is that the colors aren't as good as your typical Sony, LG, Samsung TVs. And if you are picky about colors, you may not like them. The other omissions that this TV has can be lived with and there is no denying that this might be the best value for money you can get in this price range. So I can definitely give this TV a huge recommendation. But I'd recommend that you check the quality of colors if it is possible to make sure that it isn't a deal breaker for you. Even though I don't think that most people are going to have issues with it. I'm not able to test and review the TCL and Wu TVs and while they have advantages over Mi TV like stock Android TV OS running at native resolution, I think that Xiaomi as a brand is better than them. My barber comes to my home to cut my hair and when he saw the 43 inch TV, he told me that he also wanted to buy it but he was unable to get it in the flash sales. So I recommended that he could also look at other brands like TCL and Wu, but he said that he didn't want those brands and only wanted to go for the Mi TV. So Xiaomi has really done some right things with developing their public image to an extent that even the non-tech savvy people consider it to be a brand to go for. But Xiaomi also has to provide software updates and fix the problems that I talked about in this review as the hardware is held back by the software on all of their TVs. But I don't think that at this point Xiaomi is going to provide those updates as it has been quite some time since their TVs have been released and if they had plans to fix those problems, they would have released those updates already. So that is it for this video. Make sure that you give it a thumbs up if you liked it. You can also subscribe to my channel with that notification alert to get more videos like this. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.